So now we'll discuss how to select the best 3C based technology for the right application. And so getting back to a question that we touched on earlier, which is why would you ever use te techniques like 3C, 4C, and 5C versus say high C? So before I mentioned uh, that one potential reason is that a high C has in effect lower resolution. Um, and so a uh, along the same similar lines, one of the problems with high C is that again, you're measuring all possible pairwise interactions between genomic loci. And so if you consider HIND3, for example, if you use HIND3 as a restriction enzyme, HIND3 will generate um, in the human genome anyways, somewhere around the order of 10 to the 12th um, possible interactions that it could be assaying in a single experiment. And so obviously getting enough uh, coverage, so getting enough input uh, genomic sequence from many different cells is actually, it's actually pretty hard. And so your coverage of the interactions for any given short region, say like 100 base pairs, is really, really bad. And so uh, one of the common ways that you get around this is by binning your high C read. So instead of uh, when you draw that high C map and you consider the interactions between pairs of loci, one of the ways in which you can address, uh, address the coverage problem is by increasing the width of those windows so that each dot in your high C map represents possible interactions between bigger and bigger regions um, of the genome. And so of course, that can help address your coverage problem, but what that means is that you lose resolution. And so one of the biggest problems again with high C is that compared to say 3C is that you lose resolution for any given individual locus. And so answering the question of which technology should you use in order to assay chromatin structure, um, sorry, chromatin organization, you really have to ask yourself the question, what are your, what's the goals of your study? And so for example, if your goals, if the goal of your study primarily is to study kind of large scale genomic confirmation analysis, so to try to identify, you know, which regions of the genome, broadly speaking, are in A versus B compartments and study how these A, B compartment uh, assignments change across different cellular contexts, <clears throat> then it makes sense to use technologies like high C and sort of make your bins big um, and things like this. If your goal is to really study promoter enhancer interactions for a single promoter or a single locus, then it makes much more sense to use technologies like 3C and 4C because you'll just get better coverage of the locus that you design primers for. Um, another possible problem with high C and that's related to getting enough coverage is that um, the uh, the library complexity is heavily affected by the amount of input material you have. And so library complexity generally refers to the number of unique molecules inside your library. And so for high C, that amounts to asking how many unique chimeric molecules um, do you have in your library? And that's really affected by the number of input cells. And so if your number of input cells to your high C assay is small, then you typically need to do PCR amplification, for example, which may lead to lower library complexity. Um, and so if you have low library complexity, that means that no matter how deep sequencing you do, you're still just not going to get very good coverage of your, um, of your interactions. Um, and so uh, as a final note, um, an often asked question then is, well, how many, you know, assuming that the uh, library complexity is not an issue, then how many reads should I map um, in order to get sufficient coverage of, say, the human genome uh, for any given high C interaction uh, assay. And so in general, that's, that's a pretty difficult pro uh, question to answer because it depends, again, usually when you do even a high C assay, there is some um, number of uh, loci which are typically of more interest than others. Um, but essentially, most I think most people generally assume that about 100 million uh, mapped reads is usually enough if you make your bins wide, like say 40 KB in size. So obviously if you need, if you want smaller bins, then you're going to need more reads than that and hopefully higher library complexity. But about 100 million reads for about 40 KB with uh, wide windows is, is about right. And so 
Just uh, to conclude, I want to briefly uh, revisit the idea of using high C for genome assembly. And so previously we mentioned in the genome assembly lecture that you can use high C technologies to help do assembly. And so one particular uh, company and method associated with it, the Chicago method, uh, basically uses the fact that um, the majority of interactions that you expect from a high C assay involve local interactions. And so again, uh, sort of in the middle of the high C lecture part of Part of the lecture, um, I mentioned that uh, you can compute like an expected interaction count that basically amounts to, um, mostly speaking, a, a, a strong diagonal on your high C map. And so the idea of the Chicago method for doing genome assembly is to take advantage of the fact that you expect the majority of interactions that high C pulls down to be to represent the diagonal uh, on the high C map. And so what you can do is you can basically take, uh, you can use in vitro chromatin in order to generate, um, in order to generate interactions that give you this diagonal, right? And so in in vitro uh, chromatin assembly, what you do is you take your naked DNA, um, you basically use like a, uh, there's there's standard like chromatin assembly kits to do this. So you can basically just take naked DNA, add some histones and use one of these kits to basically self-assemble uh, chromatin with nucleosomes um, present in some locations of the of the genome, and so the nucleosomes themselves may not be in the so-called like native location that they would be in vivo, um, but you know you will get nucleosomes along the genome, and so the idea is that with the uh, Chicago method is that now that you have in vitro um, chromatin. You can then do cross-linking, um, you can do your enzyme digestion, and more or less follow the high c protocol. And then you can basically generate reads that should in principle correspond to this strong diagonal on the high c map. And so how that helps you with assembly is that again, um, you'll know that you know that for the most part, most of the interactions that you're capturing between different genomic loci are local, and so um, that helps with your assembly because if you have uh, different scaffolds and you're trying to order them, then uh, if you have reads from this Chicago method uh, version of HiC, and you have reads that map from one that link uh, two different scaffolds, then you can be more certain that those two scaffolds uh, follow each other uh, on the linear chromosome.